हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू विचार वंदना चैनल दिस इज वन मोर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर फॉर एडवांस्ड कैन प्रोटोकॉल इंटरव्यू सीरीज ईच वीडियो कंटेन्स वन सिनेरियो बेस्ड इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन एंड डिटेल्ड आंसर सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मोर टाइम लेट अस डायरेक्टली सी द क्वेश्चन इमेजिन देर इज अ कैन नेटवर्क एंड देर इज ओनली सिंगल नोड इन इट मे बी अदर नोड्स आर इन बस ऑफ और डिस्कनेक्टेड एटसेट्रा बट यू हैव ओनली वन प्रॉपर नोड कनेक्टेड टू द नेटवर्क सो वॉट हैपन्स इन दिस सिनेरियो प्लीज वॉक थ्रू इट To answer this question, you must know about CAN frame format, acknowledgement error, error counters, their increment and decrement rules, error states like error active, passive, and bus off, and the transition criteria between them, etc. If you are not clear or unaware of CAN protocol concepts, then you can master CAN and CAN FT protocol from scratch from a Udemy course. whose link and discount coupon codes are given in the description of this video so let us answer this question now some new people might say that the communication won't happen in the network as only one single node is there they are partially correct since single node is there at least the rx part of the communication doesn't happen with the ecu as there is no one else to send the frames on the bus there is no possibility of arbitration as there is no competing node transmission of a successful frame also cannot happen as there is no one else to acknowledge the frame whichever node is transmitting so in one way we can say no proper communication happens but this answer doesn't give complete picture of what is happening in this scenario some intermediate level people might say ecu will go into bus off how do you ask let me explain since the bus is at recessive state and idle the ecu will try sending the frame all the fields from start of frame till checksum delimiter will be transmitted but during acknowledgement slot the ecu wouldn't receive any acknowledgement as there are no other nodes in the can network this will be acknowledgement error so right after acknowledgement slot the node will send error frame destroying the current frame being transmitted also the tec which is transmit error counter will increment as this is a transmit error once the error frame is over the ecu will retry to transmit the same frame once more and again not get the acknowledgement and again sends the error frame and retries the retransmission this cycle happens again and again and again and the transmit error counter value keeps on raising so the ecu first becomes error passive state and then once the tec crosses 255u it enters a bus off and stop the transmission also altogether this seems very logical and right answer but let's think about it when you have try to test the ecu you connect the ec with a canalizer or canoe tool and power on before you start the canalizer software it is like in the can network only ecu is present so the scenario which is mentioned here is not so hypothetical completely when you test the ecu you might encounter this scenario every day but still you don't see ecu going into bus off right because once you start the canalizer software you can see the ecu communicating the frames which wouldn't be the case if ecu was in bus off state so ecu doesn't go into bus off state obviously then the answer given above is wrong so what is the right well, answer we can answer this question properly only if we have expertise in tec increment decrement rules and its exceptions Let us see one of the TEC increment rules and an exception rule which will help us in answering this question correctly. TEC which is transmit error counter will be incremented by 8 when transmitter node sends an error flag. 
and the exception one for this rule is the TX node is error passive and detects an acknowledgement error and doesn't detect a dominant bit while sending passive error flag which is bit error then the TEC will remain unchanged that is it will either not increment nor does it decrement okay so obviously as per this rule the ECU keeps on encountering acknowledgement error and the TEC will increment each time not by 1 but by 8 that is TEC from 0 will become 8 and then 16 and then 24 etc. Well you know the table of 8 right so we can continue like that. Then after a moment as this keeps on happening TEC will reach 128 and that's when EC will become error passive. Now the exception we mentioned above was not applicable to the TX node which was error active. So till now we did not apply this exception. But now since our ECU is in error passive state, let us see if the exception has any role to play. Let me read the exception rule once more. The transmitter node if in error passive which is true in our case right now and detects an acknowledgement error which is also true in our case, doesn't detect a dominant bit while sending a passive error flag, then transmitter error counter remains unchanged. Now, this exception has three points or three criteria. In our case, we already know now that the, our transmitter is in error passive state. So that's satisfied. And detecting the acknowledgement error part that's also qualified and satisfied as you are finding the acknowledgement error as you have not got any acknowledgement in the acknowledgement slot. So it's satisfied. Second point is also satisfied. And the last part which says it doesn't detect a dominant bit while sending passive error flag. We have to understand this point. If the last point or last criteria also is satisfied, then it means that this exception is applied hence the TEC will remain unchanged. That is, the TEC will be stuck at 128 only and ECU will be in error passive state only and not move to bus off state. So this is my favorite part of the exception here because it differentiates between the existence of a receiver node and absence of a receiver node by help of this third criteria of the exception. If there was a receiver node with error active state in the CAN network and had not given acknowledgement to our frame transmitted by our ECU, then our ECU would detect acknowledgement error and soon after acknowledgement slot it would start sending the passive error flag. At the same time the receiver node would have CRC error and send the error flag as well as it detected the CRC error and that is why it did not give the acknowledgement in the first place. And it would have put the active error flag on the bus. Only difference is it would start sending after the acknowledgement delimiter bit which would have overwritten the second bit of our passive error flag from our ECU on the canvas. So, our ECU which also monitors the canvas would detect a dominant bit while sending its passive error flag. So, detecting a dominant bit during the passive error flag of acknowledgement error confirms the existence of a receiver node on the CAN network. On the other hand, if we do not detect any dominant bit during our passive error flag, that means either there is no receiver node on the network or there are some nodes but all are error passive state and hence not so reliable. And hence it doesn't make sense that we take this acknowledgement error seriously and increment TEC. Right? So coming back to our case here since our ECU is the only node in the entire CAN network we don't detect any dominant bit during our passive error flag and hence the third criteria of the exception is also satisfied and this exception rule is satisfied and hence the TEC remains unchanged that is TEC remains at 128 
which is barely error passive state. So to answer this question in simple terms, the ECU will detect acknowledgement error every time it sends a frame. Then destroys the frame by sending the error flag and after error frame it will retransmit the frame and TC keeps incrementing by 8 every time till it moves from error active state to error passive state. Once TC becomes 128 and ECU becomes error passive, it remains error passive and TEC remains at 128. Retransmission is being tried and passive error flags are being sent and acknowledgement error are being detected continuously, but the TEC won't increment. Well, to go further, once another node becomes active, let's say in our case which I explained, the canalizer is made on, right? Then, when the for the first time, when the acknowledgement is got for the transmit frame, the TEC would decrement and immediately our EC would become error active again. But that discussion is out of the scope of this question and so we will not go into it and we can discuss this in future videos. I hope you found this question and answer enjoyable and informative. If you did not understand some concept of CAN protocol I explained here, then please enroll to my CAN and CANFD Udemy course whose details and discount coupon etc are given in the description of this video. You shall also get a certification upon completion of my course. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and comment your feedback and questions and thoughts. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day and bye. Happy learning.